field application engineer for Enphase Energy for the South African market. Today I'll be discussing how we connect microinverters to the AC output of a Victron hybrid inverter. Join me with the presentation. Yeah, in-phase microinverters with Victron. We'll just introduce um, our team in South Africa. We've got Ralph Barold. He is the country manager. And as mentioned before, I'm Justin Flanagan, the field application engineer. So learning outcomes from the presentation, we get to understand the benefits of using in-phase with battery energy storage systems, understand the types of configurations of Victron, and we'll know how to configure Victron and Enphase together. Just a quick introduction of Enphase, who we are and where we've come from. The country was set up in America in 2006. Our head office is in Silicon Valley and we are listed on the stock exchange. We have <clears throat> installed microinverters over 3 million houses across the globe. We've shipped more than 58 million microinverters. We have 8 million hours of testing every year. We've got over 300 issued patents, and we are in 140 countries at the moment and expanding. The NFAS advantage. Let's take a look at the advantage of a string inverters. So NFAS, we don't have any single point of failure. We have a 25 year warranty in South Africa. We've got rapid shutdown functionality with no additional equipment needed. Module level monitoring, which means we can deep dive into each individual EV module and see the performance of how the uh, module is uh, operating. We've got a flexible, we've got a high flexible design. We are AC only on the roof, which means there's no high DC voltage coming from the roof down to your inverters, and we are modular, which means we are able to expand as you need to. Let's take a look at the equipment needed for each system. We'll be discussing the IQ7A microinverter. This is the seventh generation. It's lightweight, it's double insulated, it's IP67, <clears throat> which can stand, uh, withstand harsh conditions and is compatible with most of the modules. Um, the next device is the gateway. The gateway previously known as the Envoy. The function of the gateway collects all the data from the microinverters through power line communication, as short known as PLC, and sends the information to the enlightened platform for the end user. Same gateway can be used for single or three phase connections. Connection types um, to connect to the internet. It's very easy. It's either Wi Fi, Ethernet, or cellular. Um, also, with the gateway, we are able to connect CTs directly onto the gateway. So we have accurate readings of um, our consumption, either import or export back to the grid, and our production values from the PV array. The next device is called the Curielay. Um, this Curielay protects the microinverters and it monitors the AC voltage and frequency. Should it be out of range, it will disconnect the microinverters from the grid. The single phase Curielay is on the left and the three phase Curielay is on the right. The next device you will need is the Q cable. The Q cable is wired at 2.5. It comes in different lengths, uh, 1.3, 2 meter, or 2.3 meters. Each connector is plugged into one microinverter. Um, you have single phase or three phase Q cable, which means you don't need to carry additional or separate microinverters. So if you've got a three phase system, you'll just change your Q relay cable your, sorry, your Q cable on the roof, as the Q cable is pre-wired for L1, L2, L3, 
and then it goes back to L1, L2, LC, and it follows that pattern up until the end of your microinverter. We'll go through the accessory. So this is the field wireable connector. You get a male and female. This is only used for the uh, single phase connection. You've got your protective cap for unused AC connection on your Q cable. You've got your Q termination for single phase and C phase. That's just the tail that uh, you will can not connect, but you will put the Q terminator on the end of your, your, your tail on your branch circuit. So no water or dust can get inside. And it's also to protect that there's no uh, large circuits coming on your roof. You've got your disconnecting tool. This tool is used to disconnect your DC connector from the microinverter or your AC Q cable from your microinverter. And you've got your current transformer. This current transformer can handle 200 amps, which is corrected, uh, connected directly to the gateway. I use NFAS with Victron. We'll run through a number of um, examples. So we've got a flexible design. We've got greater productivity, we've got increased safety, and we have more control over the systems. Commonly uh, paired products is the MultiPlus and Quattro device from Victron with uh, microinverters. There's always a solution that is possible with these connections. Communication. We'll just meant, uh, have an example of how everything communicates on site. So microinverters are placed underneath each PV module. They will communicate down to the gateway. And from the gateway, it's connected to the internet at home. And then it will send all the information to the Enlightened platform and the Enlightened cloud. And from there, you'll be able to see your performance of your system, either on your mobile device or you can use a laptop. It's very similar with the Victron system. The Victron is connected to the internet at home. It sends all the information to the Victron cloud, <clears throat> and you can see it on the app. So introduction to an AC coupled system. AC coupled system. IQ7A microinverters are connected on the AC output of a Victron Multiplus or Quattro inverter. When the PV is producing power, it will supply it to the essential loads and excess power will be charged to the battery when there's no grid available. Ace, uh, the main advantage of AC coupled, once the grid fails, the battery inverter creates a microgrid, which allows the PV to continue supplying power to the central loads and charges the battery. This will prolong the battery life as it reduces the number of cycles during sunlight hours. During this state, the non-backup loads will switch off as they are only powered by the grid. This is controlled by the automatic transfer switch built into the Victron inverter. Victron has a number one rule. So if the Victron is rated at 8 kVA, you are only allowed to have about 8,000 watts of PV production on your roof. But if you have more than that on your PV side, you can connect it on your nominal side, which means in the event of a grid failure, the, the other section of your PV will switch off. Then you have a minimum battery capacity uh, with lead acid, you need one kilowatt peak of installed PV power for 4.8 kilowatt hours of battery capacity and lithium batteries, you're allowed to have 1.5 kilowatt peak of installed PV power required for 4.8 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. With this uh, said, if your client needs a larger PV system, you can connect the PV on the non-backup side of the grid as a normal grid type uh, connection. For more information regarding the Victron number one rule and battery capacity, please refer to the Victron article link below. Let's have a look at the AC frequency shot. What is AC frequency and when is it required? So AC frequency, as previously mentioned, Victron, Multiplus and a Quattro battery inverter allows the system to work in grid mode. With microinverters producing power, even when there's no main grid available. When PV production is higher than the required 
power consumption, excess power is directed to the batteries. In this case, a way to control PV production is needed to manage the state of charge and avoid damage to the batteries. Frequency shifting is the method Victron inverters use to control PV power. By changing frequency of the AC wave, the multiplus and quattro can control the power output from the microinverters to prevent overcharging the batteries, as well as overloading the inverter charger at the input of the battery. Just in simpler terms, as your frequency increases, the power of the microinverters will decrease. N-phase grid profiles contain these ramp rate settings. Integration, we'll have a look at some SLDs. Um, the first SLD will show if the third party inverter does not have frequency shift available. And in Victron's case, it has got AC frequency shift. So that will be on the second uh, SLD. So this is the first SLD example um, with no frequency shift available. Your PV production or PV system will be connected on your normal side, which means in the event of a grid failure, your PV will switch off, but your battery will still supply the essential loads. With Victron, our PV system will be connected on the backup side or the AC output of the Victron system. And in the event of a grid outage, the PV will still stay on, supplying power to your essential loads and keep charging the battery if it's not fully charged. So design principles with N-phase system components don't change. The CT positions are the same. Only the connection point for N-phase system changes with the Victron and AC frequency shift function is needed for backup installations. How do we configure Victron or N-phase microinverters to work? So after connecting the multiplus or quattro to the battery, you can now connect a computer through the V bus um, and you will load the latest firmware onto the Victron device. Once that's done, you can go to the assistant mode and you can either select ESS assistant for grid application to take full advantage of self-consumption mode or PV inverter support in your system for off-grid applications. The table below just shows your frequency range for the South African market on how the, the frequency will start working in a backup mode. So with the 50.5 Hertz, this won't have any drawback um, with N-phase. It will just increase the frequency up until the regulation kicks in and it will work accordingly. But if you want to be very specific, we are always able to derive the grid profile and adjust the frequency to start at 50 Hertz. Once that's done, you will complete the assistance and write the new settings to the multipass or quattro inverter. With in phase um, on the installer toolkit app, all you'll need to do is make sure you select the correct grid profile. If you don't have this grid profile readily available on your profile, just email customer support and they'll be readily available to share the correct grid profile for you. So we'll have a look quickly at the summary and checklist um, with Victron. The quick summary is the number one rule factor. That's, um, remember the, the, the rule where if uh, the Victron is uh, 8 kVA, you're only allowed eight kilowatts of power from the PV on the backup side. The battery capacity, the ESS assistance has been um, selected for the frequency range and the correct grid profile has been selected for the end phase on the commission toolkit. Thank you for listening to the presentation. If you have any queries, um, you are welcome to email myself for any additional technical support.